Good morning, everybody. This is part four of Dear Mr. Henshaw. Um, before I get started, I just want to say how proud I am of everybody who is participating in our discussion boards, uh, following along with us, trying my Google Docs. You guys are awesome, and your sixth grade teachers are going to be so happy with you because this is all stuff that you are going to start learning how to do in sixth grade, working with Schoology, working with Google Docs. So you guys are getting a little jump start here. Uh, unfortunately, we can't be together, but, you know, I'm trying to see the bright side here. Um, I'm going to read the next part of Dear Mr. Henshaw today. I want you to focus in on the advice that Mr. Henshaw gives Lee. It's going to be revealed to him. There's also going to be a, a few vocabulary words that I stop and talk about. These are the things that you're going to be asked to write about in your assignment that goes with this part. So pay special attention to those vocabulary words and the advice that Mr. Henshaw gives to Lee. Okay. All right. We're starting on page 31. When we last read, he had just finished those questions. December 4th. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I am sorry I was rude in my last letter when I finished answering your questions. Maybe I was mad about other things, like dad forgetting to send this month's support payment. Mom tried to phone him at the trailer park, where his mom says he hangs his hat. He has his own phone in his trailer, so the broker who lines up jobs for him can reach him. I wish he still hauled sugar beets over in the refinery to Spreckles, so he might be able to come see me. The judge in the divorce says he has a right to see me. Support is one of the, mess, one of the vocabulary words that I'm going to be asking you to think about. When you answered my questions, you said the way to get to be an author was to write. You underlined it twice. Well, I sure did a lot of writing, and you know what? Now that I think about it, it wasn't so bad when it wasn't for the book report or for a report on some country or South America or where I had to look up things at the library. I even sort of miss writing now that I've finished your questions. I get lonesome. Mom is working overtime at Catering by Katie because people give a lot of parties this time of year. When I write a book, maybe I'll call it The Great Lunch Bag Mystery because I have a lot of trouble with my lunch bag. Mom isn't so great on cooking roasts and steak now that dad is gone, but she makes me good lunches with sandwiches on whole wheat bread from the health food store with good fillings spread all the way to the corners. Katie sends me little cheesecakes baked just for me or stuffed mushrooms and little things she calls canapes. Sometimes I get a piece of quiche. Today I was supposed to have a deviled egg. Katie buys the smallest eggs for parties, so half an egg can be eaten in one bite and won't spill on people's carpets. She puts a little curry powder in it with mashed up yolk, which squirts out of a tube so it looks like a rose. At lunchtime, when I opened my lunch bag, my egg was gone. We leave our lunch bags and boxes, mostly bags because no sixth grader wants to carry a lunch box lined up along the wall under our coat hooks at the back of the classroom behind a sort of partition. Are you writing another book? Please answer my letter so we can be pen pals. Still your number one fan, Lee Botts. And here's a picture of his lunch. Okay. December 12th. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I was surprised to get your post postcard from Wyoming because I thought you lived in Alaska. Don't worry, I get the message. You don't have a lot of time for answering letters. That's okay with me because I'm glad you were busy writing a book and chopping wood to keep warm. Something nice happened today when I was hanging around behind the bushes at the school waiting for 10 minutes to, com to come before the first bell rings. I was watching Mr. Fridley raise the flags. Maybe I better explain that the state flag of California is white with a brown bear in the middle. First, Mr. Fridley fastened the U.S. flag to the halyard. That's a new word in my vocabulary. And then he fastened the California flag below it. When he pulled the, the flags to the top of the flagpole, the bear was upside down with his feet in the air. I said, hey, Mr. Fridley, the bear is upside down. This is a new paragraph because Miss Martinez says that there should always be a new paragraph when a different person speaks. Mr. Fridley said, well, so it is. How would you like to turn him right side up? So I got to pull the flags down, turn the bear flag the right way, and raise both flags again. Mr. Fridley said maybe I should come to school a few minutes early every morning to help him with the flags. But please stop walking backwards because it makes him nervous. 
so I now don't have to walk quite so slow. It was nice to have somebody notice me. Nobody stole anything from my lunch today because I ate it on the way to school. I've been thinking about what you said in your postcard about keeping a diary. Maybe I'll try it. Sincerely, Lee Box. December 13th, so the very next day. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I bought a composition book, like you said. It is yellow with a spiral binding. On the front, I printed, Diary of Lee Marcus Botts, Private. Keep out. This means you. That's the way he wrote it. When I started to write in it, I didn't know how to begin. I felt as if I should write, Dear Composition Book. But that sounds kind of dumb. So does Dear Piece of Paper. The first page still looks the way I feel. Blank. I don't think I can keep a diary. I don't want to be a nuisance to you, but I wish you could tell me how. I am stuck. Puzzled reader. Lee Box. Nuisance is another one of those words that I'm going to ask you to think about as you uh, do your assignment for this part. I'm going to reread that sentence. Think about what he means by nuisance. I don't want to be a nuisance to you, but I wish you could tell me how. I am stuck. Hmm. Dear Mr. Henshaw, I got your postcard with the picture of the bears. Maybe I'll do what you said and pretend my diary is a letter to somebody. I suppose I could pretend to write to Dad, but I used to write to him and he never answered. Maybe I'll pretend I'm writing to you because when I answered all your questions, I got the habit of beginning everything, dear Mr. Henshaw. Don't worry, I won't send it to you. Thanks for the tip. I know you're busy. Your grateful friend, Lee Box. I'm going to read just the beginning of his diary. This is his private diary. There it is. Okay. Dear Mr. Pretend Henshaw, this is a diary. I will keep it, not mail it. If I eat my lunch on the way to school, I get hungry in the afternoon. Today I didn't, so the two stuffed mushrooms mom packed in my lunch were gone at lunch period. My sandwich was still there, so I didn't starve to death. But I sure did miss those mushrooms. I can't complain to the teacher because it isn't a good idea for a new boy in school to be a snitch. All morning, I try to keep track of who leaves his seat to go behind the partition where we keep our lunches. I watch to see who leaves the room last at recess. I haven't caught anybody chewing, but Miss Martinez is always telling me to face the front of the room. Anyway, the classroom door is usually open it. Anybody could sneak in if we were all facing front and Miss Martinez was writing on the blackboard. Hey, I just had an idea. Some authors write under made-up names. After Christmas vacation, I'll write a fictitious name on my lunch bag. That will foil the thief, as they say in books. I guess I don't have to sign my name to a diary letter the way I sign to a real letter that I would mail. Okay. We're going to stop right there. More to come tomorrow.